Alright, for our first internet lesson, we are going to take a look at section 2.4, which discusses the average rate of change of a function. Uh, the best way to introduce this topic is to look at a specific example. So, let's look at the population of a small town. Let's suppose that in the year 2000, the population of the town was 15,721. And in the year 2010, the population was 17,473. Now, let's ask ourselves, at what rate did this town's population grow? At what rate did the town's population grow? So to calculate this, what we do is we simply find the change in the population, which would be the population in 2010 minus the population in 2000. And we divide that by the change in the years, which in this case, of course, would be 10. So when we take the change in the population divided by the change in time, we get 175.2 people per year as the growth rate. Now, that's really, only, that's really only an average growth rate because, as we know, uh, during this 10-year period, there may have been some years where the population grew a little more rapidly than in other years, and in some cases, the population may have even gone down. You never know. But overall, over the 10-year period, the population grew at an average rate of 175.2 people per year. So, let's look at a specific example for our specific definition of what average rate of change means. Uh, the average rate of change of a function f of x from x equals a to x equals b is defined to be the change in the output values divided by the change in the input values. So to calculate the change in the output values, we simply take the function value at the upper x value and subtract the function value at the lower x value which in this case would just be f of b minus f of a. And then we divide that by the change in the input values, which would just be b minus a. And uh, this average rate of change, it also measures the average slope of the function from x equals a to x equals b. Now, to, to make sure this all makes sense, let's look at a couple of specific examples. All right, turn the page. So, let's start with this example. Let's uh, find the average rate of change of f of x equals x squared from x equals 1 to x equals 3. So, I've drawn a picture here of the graph of f of x equals x squared. We should all know what this graph looks like. It's one of our six basic functions. And here I have x equals 1 and here I have x equals 3. Now, if you take a look at this graph between x equals 1 and x equals 3, notice that it's always increasing, and it's always increasing at a different rate. Note that up here, where x is equal to 3, the function is rising more rapidly than it is down here when x is equal to 1. Also, if we look at this in terms of slopes, note that the slope is always different in here. Uh, as a matter of fact, up here at x equals 3, the slope is larger than it is down here at x equals 1. So we're simply trying to figure out the average rate at which this function is increasing from 1 to 3. We're also looking for the average slope because average rate of change and average slope basically mean the same thing. So this is actually a very easy process. I think you're going to like this. So the average rate of change is simply defined to be the change in the output divided by the change in the input. So the change in the output is simply going to be the function value at 3 minus the function value at 1, which is simply f of 3 minus f of 1. We then divide that by the change in the input values, which would just be 3 minus 1. So here's my change in the output divided by the change in the input. So doing our function evaluations here, f of 3, of course, is going to be 9, and f of 1 is 1. So we have 9 minus 1 over 3 minus 1, which, of course, gives 8 over 2 and gives us an average rate of change of 4. 
So looking at this function, at this graph here again, from x equals 1 to x equals 3, the function is always changing at a different rate. It's always increasing and it's always increasing at a different rate. However, the average of all those rates is simply 4. Uh, from a slope standpoint, when we look at the graph here, we see that the slope is always different. The slope is smaller near the bottom here than it is at the top. But the, uh, the average of all those slopes is simply 4. Okay. Let's look at another one. Uh, let's find the average rate of change of f of x, or excuse me, f of t equals 1 over t from t equals 1 to t equals 4. So once again, just like on the last example, I've drawn the, uh, the graph of the 1 over t function, which you should also remember because this is another one of your six basic functions. And I have here t equals 1 is right here, and over here we have t equals 4. So if we take a look at the graph between t equals 1 and t equals 4, note here that the function is decreasing over that interval. Okay, the function is decreasing over that interval. So, of course, looking at that interval 1 to 4, we can see that the rate at which the function is decreasing is always different. Uh, up here, it's decreasing a little more rapidly than it is at uh, this point here. If we look at it in terms of slopes, note that the slopes are always different. The slope at this point is a little steeper than the slope at this point. Okay. So, let's go ahead and calculate the average rate of change. So, average rate of change is defined as the change in the output divided by the change in the input. So to calculate the change in the output, we simply take the function value at 4 and subtract the function value at 1, which would be f of 4 minus f of 1. And the change in the input values is simply going to be 4 minus 1. So when we calculate f of 4 minus f of 1, well, f of 4 is going to be 1 fourth, and f of 1 is 1. So we have 1 fourth minus 1 divided by 4 minus 1. Uh, calculating 1 fourth minus 1, of course, is negative 3 fourths. And that's divided by 3, which is a change in the input. And uh, remember how to do divide a fraction by a whole number. You keep the top the same, and you take the reciprocal of the denominator, multiply by the top, we get an answer of negative one-fourth. Now why do you think the answer came out to be negative for this, for the average rate of change? Well, if we look at the function here again, note that the function did decrease in value from the starting point to the ending point. Anytime your function decreases in value from the starting point to the ending point, your average rate of change will always come out negative. On the example we did above, uh, our function increased in value from the starting point to the ending point. So if your function increases in value from the starting point to the ending point, you're always going to end up with a positive average rate of change. Okay. Now, let's introduce a term that's it's not quite important for our class so much, but it will be when you take calculus. So I'm not going to give you too many exercises on this next uh, concept, but I do think it's worth mentioning. Uh, I want to define the concept of a what's called a, a secant line. And um, let me give the definition first and then look at the picture. Uh, anytime you have a line passing through two points on a graph, that line is called a secant line. Now you'll learn a little bit more about the term secant when you take pre-calculus 2, but I don't want to get too much into that right now, so I'll just say that a line passing through two points on a graph is called a secant line. So here in the picture I have drawn a secant line. Here I have the graph of an arbitrary function, and I picked two points on the graph of that function, and I drew a line between those two points. Anytime you draw a line between two points on a graph, that line is called a secant line. So the points I picked are where x is equal to a and x is equal to b. So if the, if the x coordinate here is a, then the corresponding point on the graph here is going to be a comma f of a. And at this point where x is equal to b, the corresponding point will be b comma f of b. Now, how would we calculate the slope of that secant line? 
Well, as you remember from algebra, if you want to calculate the slope of a line, you simply take the difference in the y-coordinates and divide by the difference in the x-coordinates. So the slope of that secant line is simply going to be f of b minus f of a, that's the change in y, divided by b minus a, which is the change in x. So the slope of the secant line is f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. But doesn't that look familiar? That's actually the average rate of change. So the average rate of change from x equals a to x equals b is equivalent to the slope of the secant line passing through x equals a and x equals b. So the slope of the secant line is equivalent to the average rate of change. And I have that summarized right here in the conclusion. Uh, the slope of the secant line to a function f of x from x equals a to x equals b is equivalent to the average rate of change of that function from x equals a to x equals b. Okay, well, I, I forgot to bring the textbook home with me over the weekend, so I don't have a homework assignment ready on this, uh, but I will have an assignment I can give to you tomorrow on Monday uh, that will give you some practice with this topic of average rate of change and secant line and slope. And So uh, I'll have that ready for you tomorrow, and we'll see you then.